All right, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Entrepreneur Investor. And in today's video, I wanna show you guys my high yielding dividend portfolio and wanna ask you guys a question on which high yielding dividend ETF should I buy next? So there's a lot now on the market that are available for us to invest in. And I have quite a few of them in my portfolio, but I would like to own all of them at one point or pick the best ones that I see fit in my portfolio. So let's go through my portfolio quick and then we'll go to some of the options that I have in mind. And of course, I wanna hear your guys' feedback in the comments down below and tell me which ones you guys are investing in for the future. So what I have here is Tesla down to $9.84. But why is Tesla going down? Well, let's take a look at Tesla here. This is also going down, so it's at 209 per share. We're almost at 300 at one point. So you can see year to date, we're down 15.68%. So if Tesla goes down, Tesla goes down with it. And if Tesla goes up, Tesla will go up partially with it. So if Tesla goes up to $400, $500 a share within the next few years, I think Tesla won't go to zero. But if Tesla does continue to fall, maybe to worst case scenario, about $50 per share within the next year or two, I think Tesla will have to do the reverse split, but we'll see. All right, so let's go into my portfolio, take a look at AMZ. AMZ has been doing well. It's at $20.94, down a little bit today, not a big deal. PYPY as well. PayPal, the underlying company, has been doing very well in the past few days and has seen a share price appreciation and as well as PYPY has gone up a little bit with it. The Defiant ETFs are up today. I can invest in those more if I would like. So let me know what you guys think of Defiance. A few people are selling out of them and don't feel like they're doing as well. But there is some more share price stability with these ETFs over the month. And then we know on X dividend date, these do drop by the dividend amount. But throughout the month, they're pretty stable but we'll see what happens in a market correction all we've seen is you know share price appreciation go up in the markets basically ha since these etfs have been out so we'll see what happens in a downturn i like to take both sides to these high yielding etfs because as we know they do erode over time and i could take the bull and bear case of both of them because i am very bullish i hope they go up and i hope i collect great dividends for my portfolio but if they go down i could report it for you guys on the youtube channel and say you know don't invest in these ones because you guys will lose initial investment so we'll see what happens over the long term some people are saying that you know share accumulation is more important important than total return, but I believe that total return matters the most because you could have 10,000 shares at the end of two years, but still be down 50%. So we'll see exactly what happens. What I've been doing is putting my yield max ETFs into JEPQ and JEPE. So these ones are a little more stable and a little more reputable over the long term that we've seen so far. So we'll see. I also own some shares of SPY and QQQ, and then we do have Kony up 0.87% today. SQ QY is almost up percent at one point it was and it's sitting just over $21 per share and then these are my speculative stocks here Rivian, SoFi, Palantir and Tesla just hit $210 per share and we'll see what happens after earnings that are coming up either this week or next week and then I also have some Fepi in here I bought 5.11 shares so that'll be interesting to see how that performs so let's go into some of the ETFs that I have here SoFi enhanced yield ETF I did make a video on this but I was wondering if any of you guys have have invested in this one THTA combining treasuries and options trading to pursue monthly income we'll see what happens with this I don't think they have a dividend yield yet because it's so new you can see they're disciplined yet opportunistic high potential yield potential monthly income whatever the market conditions are and you can see it's about $19.85 to purchase this ETF and they have a net expense ratio of 0.49% and then their holdings you can see most of their portfolio is in treasuries they also have cash and then they have options trading here on the S&P 500 and then it does not have any market returns yet because it is so new another ETF I was taking a look at before was iSpy I think a few of you guys invest in this one how is it done so far I'm not even sure I haven't even looked at the charts but of course ProShares is owned by BlackRock and BlackRock is a huge company and I think this one should do pretty well over the long term of course because it tracks the S&P 500 
500 high income ETF, first ETF powered by a daily call option strategy. So I think they, ProShares S&P 500 high income ETF seeks investment results before fees and expenses that track the performance of the S&P 500 daily covered call index. And I don't think we can invest in that daily covered call index. So the only way you could do that is by buying iSpy. And then of course we have the yield max ETFs. Which ones are you guys buying and do you think they're sustainable over the long term? The new one that just came out is WiMAX. I'm going to be buying some of WiMAX for sure. A few shares here and there and accumulate that position. And hopefully, you know, Tesla does go up where I do have an exit strategy out of that position. Listen, if I'm up either 10, 20% on Tesla, with share price appreciation, my average cost is like $13 per share. So if I see Tesla go back up to that $13 per share, I'm definitely selling out of it. You know, I believe in Tesla long term, but I'm just going to invest in Tesla shares. You know, the income has been great, but we really have seen some share price depreciation with Tesla. And it is getting a little ridiculous, but there's nothing they can do. It's designed to provide current income you know it's not their fault that it's going down it's tesla the underlying company's fault it is a little too risky for me personally with my position size so i do want to trim some off of course i'm going to have some still in the portfolio and exposure with it as well in wimax but i think one of the best investments to have is the fund of funds etfs even though it has a little bit of higher expense ratio and like i said i take the bull and bear case of high yielding etfs so qqqy jepy iwmy i invest in all three and we've seen nice consistent share prices you know are all down about two dollars off the all-time highs iwmy is hasn't paid as many dividends but when they do i think iwmy will be sitting around the 18 dollar range as well i think these will drop every single month after they pay the dividend but the dividend so far has outweighed the share price decline. So these have been pretty good investments so far. Next, we have the Curve Invest, which I made a video on. You can see their ETFs, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Netflix, and Tesla. The only one I was able to purchase was TSLP on Robinhood, but I'm sure other brokerages allow you to buy these. I would like to buy some more Curve. A few shares, maybe 10, 50 shares of each. These ones have seen share price appreciation as well as modest dividends so the highest yielder that they have is TSLP at 27% but we've seen more share price appreciation with TSLP than we have with Tesla because that high dividend yield of Tesla has been eroding the share price over the long term and then we also have the REC shares so these ones are more like leveraged they're not income focused so the TSLT and so on and so forth but this one here FEPI is the income and I have made videos on FEPI before and I already have five shares so I'm debating buying more or you know buying five shares of YMAX and then starting that position as well and then I have the JEPI here JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF and I really like these funds a nice modest 8 to 10 percent for both of them and we see share price stability and it's backed by the huge jp morgan asset management billions and billions of dollars i think they have trillions assets under management so this jp morgan's not going anywhere and i think i'm going to continue to reinvest my dividends from yield max into jeppy and jepq and i can reinvest the dividends that i received from jeppy and jepq into more shares of the underlying there nice snowball effect happening in my portfolio and I want to see if you guys are, are diversifying into some of these higher yielding ETFs. You know, th this iSpy and THTA, you're not going to see a 50% yield from them. They are another strategy and diversity into your portfolio. And I didn't put Clip on this list. I did have Clip, but I don't really like Clip, honestly. China is too volatile for me, and they can be reporting false numbers. Not too sure on Clip, but some people really like it and some people are up on their positions and love the dividends so you know to each his own of course and that's why i show you guys my portfolio and then you could watch someone else's youtube video and they have different portfolio and that's why you can subscribe to both channels because everyone is different that's basically it for today's video you know $34,500 in my portfolio consisting of speculative stocks and high yielding 
ETFs, you know, I am young, so I am able to take more risk. But once you hit this $30,000 mark, you know, you start to think, you know, should I really be all in on these super high risky, high yielding dividend ETFs that have seen some share price declines and share price erosion over time. So We'll see exactly what happens. Of course, I'm going to document it on this YouTube channel. If you guys did enjoy this video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.